This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1317, Solving Non-Existent Problems, by Tynan of Tynan.com, and I'm Justin Mollick. Welcome back to Optimal Living Daily, or OLD, where I narrate blogs and books for you, the best ones I can find. Today's author is Tynan, named by Time Magazine as having one of the best blogs. Before we get to his post, thank you to LaCroix Sparkling Water for their support. Did you know that all LaCroix flavor ingredients are non-GMO? It's made only with flavor ingredients that have been certified as natural. And newly added flavors to the Nicola theme include Cubana, Mojito, and Cafea Exotica, which will help you unwind after a long day. LaCroix water is free from additives, alcohol, and caffeine. And you can join the LaCroix community on social at LaCroix Water. That's L-A-C-R-O-I-X Water. And for more information and a full list of retailers, visit LaCroixWater.com. So let's get right to the post as we optimize your life. Solving Non-Existent Problems by Tynan of Tynan.com. A few minutes ago, I had a great idea. I'll set up a super backup system. I'll put a 16 gigabyte SD card into my laptop and then have it automatically back up my projects and photos in the background. Then I'll also set it to back up certain things to the internet and even more to my external hard drive. A week ago, I had another good idea. Apparently, the bugs have been ironed out and Mac OS can now be installed on my laptop. Perfect. I love Mac OS and don't have any particular affinity for Windows. A couple months ago, I was in my RV and had a big thought. The square footage is so small in here that I can install marble floors for next to nothing. How fun would that be to have a tiny RV with marble floors? And while I'm at it, I should put some LED lighting in. It's way more efficient than incandescent lighting. In the end, I never did any of these things and I chose not to for the same reason. Each of these is a solution to a problem I don't have. I back up my data. Everything important is on a backup hard drive and even if I lost it all, it wouldn't really matter. The most important stuff is online. Maybe Windows isn't the best thing ever, but my computer does 100% of what I want it to. I have it configured exactly how I like it and I'm settled in. Everything I need to do is effortless. And what do I need marble floors for? How's that going to make my life better? Maybe LED lighting is better, but I generate more than enough power each day to meet my needs. But aren't these types of solutions so seductive? I would love to spend three days wrestling with my computer, finding the best software, and maybe even setting up an elaborate backup scheme on my Frankenstein's laptop. The problem is that if I'm busy putting out 100 fires that don't exist, I'm ignoring fires that are here and are burning. That's not to say that everything I do has to be solving important problems in my life. That would be a boring robotic life. But solving problems that don't exist fill that addictive need we have for accomplishment. Solve one and you feel like the day has been well spent even if none of your real goals have been met. So here's what I do when I get into a situation that I think might be like I'm describing. I ask myself how doing this project is going to make my life better. Backing up in three places? Not at all. Mac OS? Not at all. Marble floors? Not at all. This habit, which I've also noticed in tons of other people, by the way, has a close cousin, getting info you don't need. I'm addicted to the computer, no doubt about it, and no excuses. I'd throw the thing in the lake if I could, but that would cut out most of my productivity and some of my communication, especially with people in other countries. Kicking the computer habit is like trying to give up crack but having it baked into every food available to you. It's hard to separate the bad from the good. Last week, I realized that a large part of the bad is my obsession with checking things that don't matter. Here's an example of what I might check. How many feed burner subscriptions this site has? How many visitors came to this and my other sites? How much I've made on Amazon? Stock prices for the three stocks I own? What my eBay auctions are at? Facebook, MySpace. How many new subscribers my mailing lists have? my bank account balance, the latest election polls, the news, comments on YouTube videos. I could go on and on. If I got bored for a moment, I'd go check one of these things and usually then move on to the next one. Even when I was doing something productive like writing a post, I'd interrupt myself a couple times to check these things. This is a real problem that needed fixing. Whenever I have a real problem, I try to come up with a black and white rule for myself to follow to fix it. If it's gray area, I'll abuse it. If it's black and white, I'll stick to it. 
So I decided to not check anything unless it was likely that I would take action based on the new information I found. Feed burner? Nope, I could check this once a month and just make sure I'm on track. Traffic? Same. Amazon? Doesn't matter. I make only 20 to $100 per month and I'm not going to Amazon anymore if I make less. Stocks? I'm not gonna sell any of my stocks anytime soon, so why does it even matter? eBay, the auction will end at whatever it will end at. Me checking won't help. Facebook, I get notifications if anything happens. I'll wait for those before checking. MySpace, I can check once a day. I don't get notifications there anymore. And subscribers, again, I'm not even working on anything that would affect my subscribers. And so on. Now, I don't check anything that doesn't require checking. I had to open up my brokerage account to do something, and I did glance once at the quotes, and I checked FeedBurner once, but other than that, I've been good. I've also cut myself off from sites like Reddit and Dig. That's a tough one because there's sometimes great info on those sites, but I figure my friends who read will let me know. Jonah showed me a picture of a sad wallaby, so I know I'm still getting the most important stuff. I'm gonna keep doing this for the month and see how it goes. So far, it's been great. I find that I am less compelled to be on my computer, and when I am on my computer, I'm left with nothing but productive things to do. Focus is an important thing. Eliminating distractions is one way of becoming more focused, especially when you've allowed yourself to get as distracted as I have. You just listened to the post titled Solving Non-Existent Problems by Tynan of Tynan.com. I'll have a quick comment on that, but first, thank you again to LaCroix Sparkling Water. Did you know that LaCroix only uses ingredients that are non-GMO? Their beverages have zero alcohol and sugar content. The aluminum cans are also produced without a harmful BPA liner. If you've always had trouble with drinking water because it's just too plain, you'll love the flavors of LaCroix sparkling water. From tangerine and apple cranberry to coconut cola, blackberry cucumber, and more, their unique flavor combination is the perfect pick-me-up at the end of a long workday. You can join the LaCroix community on social at LaCroix Water. And for more information and a full list of retailers, visit LaCroixWater.com. That's L-A-C-R-O-I-X, water.com. It's funny, his post references MySpace, so it must be old. I didn't check the date on it. But I did wanna say one little trick you can try, which relates to yesterday's episode, actually. If you find yourself compulsively doing things like checking social or going into apps on your phone and time passes by when you don't really want it to or when you wanna be productive instead, a trick is to simply pause before taking action. Just a slight pause For him, it was asking himself that black and white question, but really it could be anything. That pause can help set you back on track. So try that out. Have a great weekend if you're listening in real time. And I'll catch you in the Sunday show tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.